Okay, today in this video I'm going to talk about uh, properties of exponents. Um, I believe these are the last two properties I'll talk about for exponents. Uh, we got to talk about negative exponents and we got to talk about zero exponents. In my very first video about properties of exponents, um, it did come up that we did have a negative exponent uh, when dealing with one of the properties. I didn't quite explain everything about that. So in this video I'm going to explain more about negative exponents and then also what happens if you have a zero for an exponent. I'll explain a little bit behind that also. Okay, so in this video, I will first talk about the algebra behind this. So I'm going to use variables to kind of explain these properties. And then with those, I'm going to replace all those variables with numbers so we can get a better understanding of um, these two properties. Okay, so negative exponents. Um, a negative exponent would be uh, just a quick example. If I had, and I think in my last video, this is what it turned out to be. If I had 3 to the negative third power, something to that effect. Um, what happens when I have a negative exponent? Well, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to try to remember back to that previous video and how do you get a negative exponent? Okay, so actually I'm going to come go, uh, I'm just going to do a, a number example real quick before I start writing down some algebra. So what if you have a problem where you have 3 to the second power divided by 3 to the fifth power? Okay, now when you look at these two numbers, 3 to the second, that's actually just a 9. 3 to the second is just a 9. And then 3 to the fifth power, well, that's, uh, let's see, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So this here is a 9. This here is a 9. That here is an 81. 81 times 3 would be 243. It's good to know a little bit of mental math when doing this. Okay, so basically what we have here is we have... 3 to the second power, which is 9, and 3 to the fifth power, which is 243. That's just a small fraction. That's all that really is. It's just a small fraction. The number on top is small. The number on bottom is pretty big. So that right there is a number less than 1. All right, now the thing is, now that we know that that's a pretty small number, what we can do, um, actually that number reduces here. Um, I won't quite reduce it yet. But anyway, um, what we can do is instead of evaluating the number, instead of doing all that mental math that I just did, what we can actually do is we can simplify that beforehand. So I'm going to go a step backwards. I'm going to go a step backwards. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my quotient rule. If I'm dividing, if I'm dividing like bases, 3 and 3 are the base. If I'm dividing like bases, all I need to do is subtract the exponents. So in this case, I'm taking 3 to the 2 minus 5. The 2 and the 5. You take 2 minus 5, you always do the top number minus the bottom number. Okay, which becomes 3 to the negative third. So I, again, I was trying to explain where that 3 to the negative third came from. There it is. Now, what does that mean? What does that really mean when I have a negative exponent? Well, negative exponent simply just means a fraction. That's all it really means. Negative exponent is not a negative number. That's a really big mistake. That's a really common mistake that a lot of students will make when they first learn about negative exponents. A negative exponent is a fraction. That's all it is. It is not a negative number. So in this case, in this case, 3 to the negative third is actually 1 over 3 to the third. If I have a negative exponent, I need to make it into a fraction. That's one way to explain it. I need to take this number change its position. Right now it's on the top of a fraction you can think. You can think of a fraction bar here with a 1 underneath it if that helps you. Okay? I need to take this number and I need to take it to the bottom of the fraction and make it make the bottom of this fraction a little bit bigger. Okay? So if I have a negative exponent, change its position, make it into a fraction. So I have 1 over 3 to the third, which is actually going to be 1 over, uh, what is that? Uh, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. Okay, now earlier, earlier I actually wrote out this fraction uh, beforehand. It was 9 over 243, and I mentioned that that fraction reduces. So actually, let's reduce that fraction. Let's see what happens. Um, uh, both of these numbers are divisible by 3. 9 is obviously divisible by 3. Um, 243, 3 goes into 24, and 3 goes into 3. So I know it divides evenly. So 3 goes into 9 3 times. 3 goes into 24, 81 times. Uh, notice the 3 and the 81, some similar coincidental, num coincidental numbers. All right, so actually I know 9 
um, uh, three will go into 81, and three will go into three. So three goes into 81, three goes into eight twice. Uh, remainder two, 21, three goes into 21 seven times. Okay, so that nine over 243 reduces to one over 27. So notice what we have here, one over 27, one over 27. So either way you look at it, you're gonna get the same result. But notice the different ways to do this. You can either just take the, take the bases, take the exponents, subtract them, and make it into a fraction, which is actually an easier process than having to do nine over 243 and do all the mental math of reducing that fraction. So again, either process will work, uh, it just kind of de it kind of depends on what you like best. Um, now the thing is, is once we start introducing variables into this, we can't really use fractions. We can't be reducing, so we're forced to use uh, this negative exponent property. Okay, so let's actually so that's where negative exponents come from. So let's actually get into the algebra behind this. So if I have uh, if I have some a base to a negative power, if I have a base to some negative power, that's going to be basically, as I said before, just take that and make it into a fraction. This is going to be 1 over, make it into a fraction, 1 over b to the negative x. Oh, excuse me, to the, uh, to the positive x. Once I make this b, once I make my base into a fraction, the x component goes from negative to positive. So notice the change here base to a negative exponent, you flip, you flip this base and you have a positive exponent. So let's actually do this with numbers similar to that last example that I did. Um, actually, I'm going to do a couple of examples here. So if I have a regular number, maybe 8 to the negative second, all I'm going to do with that is I'm just going to flip it. It's just going to be 1 over 8 to the second. Now notice that the variable, or excuse me, the exponent went from negative 2 to positive 2. So when I flip it, when I switch it, it becomes a positive exponent, and that's just going to be, uh, if I evaluate that, that's just going to be 1 over 64. Now, I did evaluate the last ones, but that one was easy enough to do. Okay, another example I want to do with numbers, what if you have a fraction? What if you have uh, 2 thirds to the negative second, something like that? Okay, now what you're going to do actually is you're just going to, and now this, is, this holds true more here with the, with, the, uh, with the algebra, you're going to take your base and you're going to flip it and you're going to take your exponent and make it positive. So take the base, flip it, and now your exponent is positive. So that actually becomes, if we can see it on the edge of the board here, uh, 3 to the second over 2 to the second. Okay, I won't evaluate that one. Um, actually, it'd be nine over four, simple enough. Um, well, we're just doing the, the basics behind this. Okay, so that's negative exponent. Again, sometimes that can be real confusing. Sometimes the algebra behind that can be confusing. Just look at the number portion of over here. I like these two examples. A to the negative second becomes one over a to the second. Notice basically you just bring it to the bottom of the fraction. Change its position, I like to say. All right, so that's a negative exponent, zero exponent. So what if you had this scenario? So I'm not going to start with the algebra, start with a quick example. What if I had 3 to the fifth power divided by 3 to the fifth power? What would happen? Okay. If I had 3 to the fifth power over 3 to the fifth power, if I use my same rules with the quotient property, I need to subtract these numbers, these exponents. So this would be 3 to the 5 minus 5, which is 3 to the 0 power, which is, oh my goodness, what is that? Okay, so when this situation comes up, if I ever have 0 for an exponent, uh, a lot of students will think, oh, that, that's, that's crazy, what do I have a 0 there for? It's actually not that complicated. Instead of looking at the 0 here, let's look backwards, let's go back to the very beginning of the problem. 3 to the 5th over 3 to the 5th. Now the thing is, this is actually very similar if I had, uh, if I had 6 over 6. 6 over 6 reduces to 1. So the thing is, this fraction is simply just the same thing on top and the same thing on bottom. Same thing on top, same thing on bottom. So actually, this fraction just reduces to 1. So actually, if I have a number to, some, to, to the power of 0, it's not going to be a question mark what the answer is. It's actually just simply going to be 
one. Any number to the zero power is just gonna be one. So that's kind of a, 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 an example to lead us into this. Now let's actually do this with the algebra and some number examples. Okay, so if I ever have, if I ever have a base to the zero power, it's always gonna be equal to one. Now this, this number, this base is anything. It could be five, it could be 10, it could be a million, it could be um, a negative number, it could be just about anything, okay? Any number to the zero power is gonna be one any number to the zero power. So it really doesn't matter. Um, let's use a negative number, why not? Negative 10 to the zero power is going to be one. Any number to the zero power is going to be one. Um, and again, it could be a fraction, it could be a decimal, it could be just about anything, but there's just a number example to better explain that. Okay, that was a little bit of a long-winded video, but again, I had to do a little bit of, uh, a couple of examples to lead us into what a negative exponent and what a zero exponent is uh, before writing down um, all these examples. So there we are, the properties of exponents, that is the negative exponent property and the zero exponent property. Uh, just remember for negative exponents, take your base and flip it. That means you have your, um, your exponent, your negative exponent becomes positive. Uh, look at these number examples to help you out with that. Zero exponents, any number to the zero power is always going to be equal to one.